Something you were waiting for is finally here! Extremely detailed Drake Tags 2023 overview. So I'm gonna go over what's new in Drake Tags software. I'll show you functionality and how to prepare individual and business tax return. And I'll make sure in less than one hour you'll be proficient in Drake Tax software. Let's start. So let's start with the most exciting updates for 2023. Coolest option and something I discovered for myself is uh, uh, tools and blank forms. So actually Drake has a lot of like letters and templates that we can send to the client. So for example, this year, as everybody knows, we have this BOI requirements, beneficial ownership requirements. So the business has to report uh, whoever wants more than 25% of the business. So Drake has us uh, covered. So what they did, they under blank forms, and you can see, I can show you on the screen right now how it works. Uh, you can go there and actually under tools, blank forms, there is BOI organizers. So you can find it and send it to the client. How awesome is that? Under screen one, uh, address, name and address, they also added the box for change of address. So if you check that box, it goes to our uh, form 1040, so you don't have to find that form 8812 for change of address. So that's an update number two. They added this feature that uh, whatever expenses we enter under a dependent tab, it will go uh, automatically to our form 24041, which is dependent expenses. So as you remember last year, we used to enter it twice. So now if they just flow from this form. Another really cool update is e-filing batches. So you remember like we used to e-file one by one tax returns. So now you can just e-file all of them together if they have zero tax uh, due with them. So if you want to file zero federal extension, you can just go to, and I'll just include the um, instructions right here, and you can just do it. It's super awesome, especially right before extension day when you just need to file all of them. So thank you so much, Drake Tax Software, for adding this cool, cool option. So they added this option, Drake Tax 1040. So for businesses who only file 1040s, instead of buying unlimited, they can just buy this package, which is um, much cheaper. So that's pretty awesome. But you can also switch to unlimited if you would like, you, would like to anytime during the year. So that's pretty awesome. So that was the last update for Drake Tax 2023. And now we're gonna switch over to functionality, how to use Drake Tax software. And I'll show you like what I use, what I like, what I dislike, and um, let's switch. That will be fun. So before I start um, going over functionality and flow of the program, I want to say thank you, Drake Tax Software, for providing me access to the tax software so I can record this video. Thank you so much, guys. And in general, like there is support. Uh, every time I call them to clear diagnostics or I email to solve any issue I have, they're super helpful. So that's awesome. Uh, so let's go over the flow and functionality of the Drake Tags 2023. So I'll start with the things I use the most. Uh, so first of all, we'll go through uh, through different details in their menu, right? So this is like all this like useful information is usually right here. So when I open the Drake Tags for a first time, what I have to do, I actually have to go to setup, go under EFIN and enter my EFIN number to verify. It takes like a second to verify, which is really awesome before, because before it used to take like 24 hours or something like that in a different tax software. So here it takes like a couple of seconds. So we didn't need to set up our EFIN information and we do need to set up firm information so like let's say if you were uh, just um, ea or cpa and just preparing taxes yourself you can just enter your information like i enter my first last name comma cpa and that's kind of like my company's name which dba not technically company but a dba number or you can enter your company number under firm 
Prepares. So they allow you to enter a couple of prepares. So you can just go there, enter all the prepares, and when you prepare tax return, you can choose from those options. And here you have like general information and like lots of different like things that you can change, um, change it up a little bit and customize your tax software. So that's this uh, setup. I use help, uh, of course, when I need uh, chat support. Uh, so for example, right now they tell me to call them because I think chat hours is like I'm just recording this video really early, so it's closed, but they also have, uh, I usually call them and it's pretty awesome and you can send your tax return to them so they can take a look. So it's super convenient. So that's for help option. Uh, let's see, uh, software help, email, you can like email them and things like that. So that's, that's kind of like, I usually just look it up their support. A phone number or chat if I need to. Last year data, super important too, because that's how I transferred information from last year to current year. So pro forma or things like that. So that's super helpful. Reports, if you need anything like that, you can go in here. I have not used this before, but I think it's cool to have this option if you do need it. Tools. All right. So I just, this is where we add states. So we just go here and choose any state you need to add. Uh, well, you can in add all of them, but the thing is like it will take more space in your computer. So you can just add a few that you use. And I think that's kind of what I use. Every time I get a new state, I just go there. And uh, blank forms, this is something I just recorded video on. It's like so cool. They have all this like templates, things, forms we can send to our clients. So I think here I also, I just showed you how to find this BOI um, organizer, which is really nice. And here, okay, this is kind of cool because if something is off in, like not is off, like let's say I was trying to transfer this client from 2022 and it didn't transfer. So what it actually helped me, I just went here to repair index files and it's kind of like, um, I don't know, it resets your program. And then I was able to find that a prior year client in 2023. So that actually, if something doesn't work, which almost never happens, maybe once in a year. So this is where I go. I go on the repair index files and it clears out whatever mistake I have. Uh, file maintenance. So if you need to back up, restore files and things like that, that's where we go. Password protected files, things like that. So that's pretty awesome. Client communication, like if you want to modify letters, envelopes, whatever. So this is where we go. Amortization. Uh, let's see. So that's, yeah, they have some other things, but that's kind of all I use here. E-file. So this is super important section. After we're done with tax return, if we need to e-file it, that's where we go. So we need to clear first all diagnostics and then go under select return for e-file. So that would be a first step, right? The second, so let's say we press here and if I had any returns for e-file, I would just check the box and press continue. Then I go to transmit and receive, and this is where I will see files ready to e-file and I just select them, send and receive. And then the next step would be process acts. If I need to receive any new acts, uh, let me just exit because I do have a few new ones. And um, prepare extensions. Yeah, if you need to prepare extension, that's where we go, all this kind of stuff. And if you want to just check it out, your e-file database, that's another way to open it. File. Okay, so that's also, that's usually, I kind of like started review backwards, but it's good. Like now we're at the beginning. So if you need to create a new tax return, that's where we go, right? File, open and create. If you want to print it or view or do things like that, log out, prepare, cool. So we can log into another one. As you can see here, we can add notes for prepare, which is really nice. And they do roll over to the next year. So that's cool. Here's the client name. If you like, we'll enter the tax return right now and we will see all these things right here. We can modify our columns and add more or less. And those are kind of like quick way to find open and create, calculate it if you need, print and view. 
there's a couple more things right here but honestly i have not used them before but i think i do know about portals which drake tax has a portal so you can uh, request the client or send it to the client or save them documents you can save them and then other things i think this is automation from drake tax which is really cool and this is some kind of like web tax library so that's what i use and um, i do think it's super easy like the flow of the program it's super easy to follow it's super like i think that was one of the program was so much easier for me to learn than others like i kind of like intuitively know where to find stuff um yeah so that's overview how drake tax 2023 looks like i hope um, that makes sense to use the flow of the program and now we're gonna jump in into preparation of simple 1040 in drake tax software and then we'll prepare business tax return and i'll show you how to transfer k1 from business tax return to individual so we can complete both in super short period of time and you can see how efficient you can be in drake tax software So before we switch to preparation of simple 1040 and business tax return in Drake Tax Software, I also want to mention that I sell online courses on Drake Tax Software. So I have courses on individual tax preparation and business preparation. On individual, I cover all the common forms that you need to enter in Drake Tax Software. I also go over like concepts like sale of real estate or sale of house and things like that. And in the end of my course, we together prepare a complex 1040 and you're ready to go, ready for a uh, tax season. For business tax return, I go over C Corp, S Corporation partnership. I show you how to prepare in Drake tax software. And also you have a practice so you can just play around and practice yourself. I give access to Drake Tax software if you don't have one or you can use yours. Also, we have a weekly course if you need to ask me questions. So if you want to check it out and if you're interested in it, please go to my website remotecpainla.com. Well, thank you for your time. That was just a small advertisement. But I'm switching back to how to prepare simple 1040 and business tax return in Drake Tax software. Alrighty, are you guys ready to do individual and business tax return in like, I don't know, probably like 20 minutes? Let's do it. Uh, so for this example, I'm just going to enter W2 and consolidate it 1099 uh, for um, individual tax return. So we'll have 1099 dividends, capital gains and interest income and for business we'll just prepare entities that can be 100 percent owned by our shareholders so for this example it will be an s corp simple s corp with this income and balance sheet so i also will show you some how to enter depreciation are you guys ready let's start uh, in order to create a new tax return we have to go open in and create enter tax id number which we want Confirm the tax ID number and enter the tax return that we want to create. What like type 1040, 1120S, partnerships like that. So it will be prompt, prompted to this page. This is for obviously we start with 1040 where we have to enter first name, last name, date of birth and the address and the filing status. So that's something I just did. So this is a step I did. Um, and that's kind of how I start preparation. So usually my first step in preparing tax return would be to take a look at prior year, see and enter the basic information. So we always request the prior year tax return. And let me show you what information we get from prior year tax return. Uh, so I just went to view and print and that's where we can review our tax form. So in prior tax return i get obviously social security numbers that for purpose of this reason i made up social security number name and last name so for name and the last name i just enter named and last name so it looks clean and clear um so i also copy and paste um or also i mean we can request if the address changed or not but usually if the address stays the same we use the address we use the name social security number uh dependent information things like that there is also information on second page of 1040 and right here it says uh occupation of the taxpayer i kind of like Go look over prior year tax return to see if there's any specifics to current years that we had 
Uh, the cool part, actually, uh, if you don't know the date of birth of your client, if you go to California tax return, you can see the date of birth in California tax return, but that's just specific to California. Alrighty, so now uh, we'll start with um, entering W2 and 1099 interest and whatever 1099 consolidated in our tax return. Uh, so for purpose of this video, this is example of W2. So I'm just going to go over things and explain like you're preparing the tax return for the first time. So uh, the employee received this W2 from their employers that shows the amount of wages and federal tax withholdings they have throughout the year. So those two numbers are the most important for us. Social Security and Medicare wages are also important, but they're for a tax preparation purpose, they're more important if they had a couple employee employers and they had a little, um, they withhold way too much uh, social security or Medicare tax. But those two numbers are always super important. So let's go to our W2 uh, entry. Uh, so Drake tax software is super easy to navigate. So here, like I look at the data entry fields, right? Uh, and I can see there's like W-2 form is entry here. 1099 interest is right here. But if I'm sometimes not sure, I can always type W-2 and will just take me where I need to be, right? Uh, so this field, we still uh, we start with if it's belong to taxpayer or a spouse. And for us, if you're not sure who is taxpayer and who is a spouse, uh, I guess I have to enter this information and then I'll show you. Then we go to the prior tax return or current year tax return and see who is um, entered under taxpayer or a spouse because it can be one or another. It just depends how they were entered last year. So let me show you in a second. So we'll start with um, W2 uh, entry. So we start with EIN. So obviously for this video, I'm just going to make up EIN. Oh, I guess this 99 exists for me. Well, let's leave it the way it is. Uh, employee name and address so technically this information comes right away from our uh, general information entry so we don't have to enter the only way the only time we need to enter it if it's different from screen one right so we enter uh, we should start with wages so i just copied the wages from um, that form and right here and social security wages and medicare wages uh, fill up automatically so we just need to make sure that they tie to our w2 if they don't we have to change it if they do we just leave them the way they are right oops i'm sorry i was not supposed to go there so here you go uh, so I am double checking my social security wages and medicare wages and our social security was holding medicare wages stays the same i guess oh i'm sorry actually my social security wages are different and medicare wages so we do need to update them and also another things we need to update uh, in enter is federal income withholdings and this is just something i noticed and right now We need to make sure all the numbers are the same. So here's our uh, box one, box two, box three, and they do tie to our W2, right? Awesome. And the same for all the withholdings. Uh, so for this example, I'm not going to enter state information just to make it cleaner for us. But if you have any questions about state tax preparation, please let me know. Alrighty, so after we enter this information, I would like to show you how we know if it's for taxpayer or a spouse. For some of you, it can be so easy to know, but some of you don't know. So let's just make sure we are all at this, on the same page. Uh, so when we close, when we go to name and address, here we have our taxpayer information and on to the right side we have a spouse information and they can be entered in any order they entered it last year on current year so we want to make sure and why it's important it's important because sometimes like when we enter w2s we want to make sure they didn't withhold 
more Medicare or Social Security taxes for one or each other. So it has to be added by person, not by um, household. So those things choosing if it was taxpayers or spouses are very important. Another things I really want to show you because it just uh, sometimes it's not as intuitive, but when you start um, working in drag text, you get used to it and it's easy to solve. Like it's easy to solve this issue. Sometimes like you're literally like, okay, so how do I add W2? There is not plus or minus right here, but it's super simple. So everywhere, every time you're in drag text software, you kind of like have to look around and they give you like a super um, helpful hints everywhere. So for example, if you're not sure how to enter multiple state W2, you can go here and there's a video to do it. There is also additional entries, but additional entries are something else because we have more boxes. Uh, but actually to enter additional W2, it says right here, press page down for new screen. And this is how we enter like new W2. So on your keyboard, you have to find page down. And for Mac users, it's something else. You just need to Google what page down is for Mac users. And you will add in this, exactly the same new field and you can add W2. Okay, so that's just um, advice for you. So after we enter W2, I want to show you where our numbers went to. First of all, form W2 filled up, right? So we can just compare to our form and that's how we know we enter it correctly. Another way, like what I usually do, I go here, I know it goes to box one of um, uh, our 1040. So I want to make sure this is the amount I had on box one. Another very important thing is obviously federal withholding. So I want to make sure this is the same amount I had, right? So those are important things. Awesome. So now we will switch into enter 1099 consolidated. Um, so for 1099 consolidated, it consists for in, uh, in cons it consists of a few things for us. And I chose this particular one because it has so much information and this is something we'll probably be, will be entering almost every single tax return. So this one has 1099 dividends. So we have our dividend information, right? Also it has 1099B, which is, uh, 1099 uh, our capital gains and also it has 1099 interest. So we'll start with the easiest one. We'll start with 1099 interest. Uh, so what I usually do, I enter it by copying um, the statement, like what is the payer name is, and I enter last four of account number. And I think I blurred it because I didn't want like somebody to have um, client's information, but that's kind of how I usually do it because sometimes we receive a couple statements and we're not sure which statement it was related to. And it's also useful next year when we look for open items. So for us, our interest income is um, one uh, rounded up to $1. So in order to enter it, we go here, interest, or we can also search for interest entry right here. And like I was just saying, we choose if it was taxpayer, spouse, or a joint, the name. And I would add the account number. So in my example, I would pretend this is account number and interest income. That's it. Save. And I just want to show you how I review tax returns. So when I do go to review, I want to make sure that this amount I just enter is right here, right? Taxable income. It's right here. Awesome. I can move on. The next part would be our 1099 dividends. So we'll start with 1099 dividends and the same. So I would go just go and copy the name of our payer. Sorry, I think I just uh, entered something else. Copy. Go to 1099 dividends. So it would be the same na name of payer, uh, taxpayer. And let's see. So it will be 251 for ordinary dividends and qualified will be $34. So we can enter it here. Or if you want to, let me just make sure 251.34, yes. 
uh, we can also uh, go to item details and will show up in this beautiful way which is exactly the same as form 1099 dividends so that's why it's like would be so easy for us to enter there's a couple more things in here i can see there is uh, section 199a dividends which to round it to two dollars and there is foreign taxes right 0 0.92 uh, so let's go here, $2, and then we have foreign tax. Uh, so for a foreign tax, we all know if there is a foreign tax is paid, probably there is a foreign income. So in, And it's important to enter it for foreign tax credit calculations. Uh, so it just tells us, please fill up this form for foreign tax information. Or we can also enter like foreign amount right here, like foreign country. I would choose various and foreign amount right uh, for income like right here foreign amount so let's see if i can show you how foreign amount is calculated oh i'm sorry i just copied two pages for this example but basically when we go to dividend details we can see whichever were uh, related to foreign country and that's something we need to enter right here so for this example i'll pretend that there is a twenty dollars of ordinary income and ten dollars of qualified income and that will generate our foreign tax credit so this information is also important for us alrighty uh, so now let's go uh, we go to uh, capital gains entry uh, so capital gains entry is under income and here we have our capital gains right uh, so I just can go to schedule D enter the description so here we have two choices we can enter each item each stock we sold one by one and that way we don't have to include 1099 i'm sorry uh right so here we have a summary so we can enter it as a summary which we just need to enter four numbers or we can enter each stock with all the details so it's up to you what you want to do so if you do enter a summary you do have to attach form 1099b with your tax return okay so this was short-term proceeds And so proceeds are right here. Uh, so Drake doesn't recognize commas. So you kind of need to delete that comma or just type certain things. Uh, seven. And here we choose if it's short term or long term. And if it was recorded, uh, enter, uh, if it was um, on 1099B, right? So I'll show you in a second what it means. Uh, so now let's enter long-term ones. I always copy information. I try not to type at all because it just, I want to avoid the human mistake that I'm sorry if I made any while recording this video. It's not as easy to prepare tax return and uh, talk, you know. <laughs> so here's long-term. Uh, I was not sure what to enter here. So because of that, I just kind of go to details and I want to see. So it says type of gain or loss short term. And I want to find where it says that it was reported to IRS. Basis reported to IRS. So I have to enter one, right? Uh, so you can do it under detailed view or you can do it here. It's up to you acquired and sold so i don't enter it because i'll attach the summary and i do like a summary but if you enter each um, each uh, stock separately you have to kind of go through all of them and enter date acquired and date sold so the tax software calculates if it's short term or long or long term because like right here you can see i overwrote it which is okay because i'm gonna attach 1099b but the software will do it for you if you enter dates all right, uh, so after I entered 1099B consolidated, I also, I just wanna make sure that it's correct. So I would compare like, what is my total gains? It should be negative 1,103. So let's see if that's what I have. Yeah, that's what I have right here. Awesome, I'm happy with that. So that's kind of, if you look at our 1040, 
we enter all the information. So the next step would be to clear the diagnostics. So I go under calculate and it tells me like, oh, this is information I haven't answered yet. So let's just go one by one. So digital assets, it tells me if the answer is no, it's supposed to be no. So yes, the answer is supposed to be no in my case. So I go there and check the box. I'm sorry, maybe I just, no, I just uh, answer no to foreign accounts, which is something I need to answer as well. And here I also should answer the question about digital assets. So in my case, it will be no. So that's what I will answer. Uh, doesn't like my EIN on W2 wages. So I'm going to go and change it up because obviously I made it up and I think I used it before. Um, so here we can right click and view full message of our, um, what is that called? It, view message of our error, right? So it says missing identification information. So for this type, uh, I need to enter ID. So I'm going to go to screen IDS, identification for taxpayer, and enter that. And also it tells me that I'm not set up for e-filing. So let me show you how to do that. So we go to e-file section. By the way, this is where PDF attachments attach in. So because I need to enter 1099B, I just go here to attach that. Uh, 1099B. Uh, e-file. For e-filing, we have to ha go to e-file section, choose what we want to e-file. So in my case, I want to e-file 1040. Also, I can choose to e-file state right here, but for this purpose, I'm not going to do it for now, right? 1040. Do not send any states. So I'm going to choose this for this option. Then what we have to do, we have to go to this e-file signature. So we do need to enter a pin, uh, signature date, uh, the I, uh, pin number. So this is just something like, what is that called? It's a like security issue. So this is a number that you create for to create like some kind of security and you enter it for a client. So they should be okay with that. Also, you can ask your client if they want to choose a pin. Uh, but don't mistake in it with, uh, what is that called, IRS protection number, whatever the issue, that's different. This is just for you and a tax software. So that's just something we choose. So we enter date, we enter number, and we enter the signature. Uh, so that should clear the three diagnostic we, sh we have. Uh, and it says California e-file is not allowed, which that's something I want. So after we're done, this thing should show be in green. So that's how we know we're ready to e-file. Another way to check diagnostic, we go to view and print. Uh, 10 for, I'm sorry. And you see those messages in the... Uh, um, in red so for now actually they're exactly the same as there but sometimes we have additional messages right here right so we need to clear them so let me quickly clear those messages and i'll show you how the return looks like when it's ready to e-file something i want to mention about one of diagnostics about uh, id so what if client didn't give you ID? Are you gonna request ID for each client? That would be a little bit too much, right? So uh, there is a way in Drake Tax Software you can just check the box, taxpayer didn't provide you driver license, right? So that's a way to do it. And what I just went, I went to update AIN for wages because uh, all nines didn't work, but I mean, for obvious reasons. So now we're ready to e-file and here we have its e-file status is green so we can go and e-file this return. So that's how we do it. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and now let's switch to business tax return. And also I'll show you how to transfer K1 to the business tax return if we both prepare both returns in Drake Tax Software. Let's dive in. Hey, keep up the good work you're doing. We're almost there. So now we're gonna prepare business tax returns that will transfer that K1 from business to individual return, clear diagnostic, have it ready to file. So you're almost done with your first video and this video you'll 
I mean, you can tell you're proficient in Drake after watching this. So keep up the good job. We just have a little bit more left. Alrighty, business tax return. So we'll prepare S Corp tax return that is connected to that 1040 we just prepared. So the individual return we just prepared will be 100% owner of this S Corp. So we'll start with EIN number that I obviously made up as a name of the corporation, address uh, that we enter the whatever their current ma mailing address is because that's how the IRS knows where to email. Date of election of an S corporation. So it's whichever date they have their S corp approved. So for my example, I'm just going to use this current year. Business activities. So here we just enter what they actually do, right? So for me, my purpose of this video, I'll try to find something that is has something to do with admin or tax preparation services. So for example, this one, other professional, scientific and technical services. That sounds amazing. So we'll do tax services and tax preparation. Um, product or service. So here we can just put exactly which service it is, or we can just put if it's product or service, whatever their product or service is. Date of incorporation. So for me, it will be the same as date of S Corp election, but that could be different. State of incorporation. So I'll put California. If it's the first year of S corporation, we need to check the box. Let's see what else is interesting here. Accounting method, we need to check the box and things like that. So that's the basic information we need to enter. Awesome. And now as any business tax return will have financials received from the client, right? Uh, so for purpose of this easier, I just made like a super easy financials, but let me go through them. So we have some sales, we have some expenses. Here, I already entered depreciation. As I see, there is equipment on their balance sheet, but sometimes the clients didn't tell us, I mean, they don't enter depreciation. So they just book uh, equipment when they purchase, they would just debit equipment for 5,000. And then they would just uh, credit cash because they spent cash, right? Uh, so we would never, never know unless we look at our balance sheet. So I highly recommend to review balance sheet. The review changes from prior year to this year and also review GL if you can. So here I already know what would be important for us. Enter equipment separately and then enter contribution separately. Uh, why am I telling you this? Because you would be like, oh, but don't we need to enter balance sheet anyways if you prepare tax return? I mean, technically, no. So there is this box right here. I'm going to show you in a second right here. 11, question 11. So it says, does the corporation satisfy, satisfy both the following requirements? So it says if the total receipts is less than 250K and then the corporation total asset is less than 250K, if uh, the answer is yes, the corporation is not required to complete Schedule L and M, right? So for my example, we have um, gross receipts is 100K, which is less than 250K, agreed, right? And the total assets and liabilities, uh, total assets also less than 250K. So what that means, that means that I don't have to uh, fill up those schedules balance sheet, but I do need to review balance sheet for the reason I just mentioned to you, so that we need to enter certain information to for the client. All right, so let's enter with, let's start with a profit and loss, and that's how I approach tax return. I do profit and loss, and then I look at balance sheet and enter balance sheet if needed. Uh, so we would start with whatever our sales are 100K and then we'll enter expenses. So gross receipts, 100K, and now let's go under deductions. And we have an advertisement of 10,000 and I think we had office expenses of 20,000, right? Let's see. 10,000, oh, 2,000. Okay, fine, I'll do 2,000. And then we have a new assets of 5,000. So for depreciation, we do not enter depreciation here, right? I mean, there is a place to override it. And sometimes we do need to override it. Like, let's say 
we didn't receive prior year depreciation schedule or there's like so, so many things can go wrong so we have a place to override it but like let's see if you override it it's gonna be like it's, it just shows up that that shouldn't be black because you see all these things are in black but that one is blue which kind of like doesn't look good and yeah it just it's just not so for depreciation we have to go we have to close this go to assets sales and recapture depreciation details and enter our assets so that will be 2023 equipment and you can just if you know exactly what it is you can just call it exactly what it is like let's say it's iphone whatever 12 uh so date it was acquired so i don't know what it what date it was so i'm just gonna use i'm sorry i was supposed to use 31st i'm just gonna use the last day of the year the cost five thousand, and then we have to enter method and in life so for uh, equipment it's usually five years so if this is not intuitive for you you can also go to item details and it has like all this information here so you can choose what method you need to use and like all other information you do need to use so um what is important here so what i use i use often obviously prior year depreciation so prior year depreciation if you enter tax return from prior year and it has depreciation we need to enter it here okay awesome so now after we enter this here pretty much our pnl should be uh good to go so now i have oh it shows depreciation of 4050 this year which is really interesting i'm gonna go take a look why is this i guess maybe because i chose um which method did I choose? It's actually interested me. 1231.23. And um, yeah, that's interesting. Let's choose straight line method because I do want the tax software to do uh, to... Which one is straight line? Straight line is this one. I want actually, I want the tax software to expand, to take section uh, 179 and expense 100% of the asset. Uh, 4025 uh that's interesting uh let me take a look what it does depreciation current year okay so it's taken a uh, basis depreciation of 4000 depreciation basis okay i guess it's um doing um yeah it's doing section 179 for 4000 and then the rest of it it's um depreciating over whatever five years or something like that uh, well, for purpose of this video, we're not going to, um, yeah, we're not going to concentrate on why it's doing this or not. But um, so we'll just move on and enter balance sheet and the rest of expenses. So idea is after we entered uh, expenses, this thing should tie to our um, work paper. So you'll have to create prepaid work paper and show that uh, what is our book to tax differences so for example for me depreciation this was the book depreciation but the tax depreciation is different so i have to reconcile book income to taxable income Alrighty, so we did this and now the next step i want to generate schedule k1 so i want to enter my shareholders information and let's see where we can do that we go back to general uh, there is the officer information right here if they received any kind of salaries and stuff like that but i think information about shareholders is actually should go here so we start with the first name and remember we just entered name and um, last name under that example that we just used and we need to enter id which will be their social security that we just enter um, and it's important for because eventually we'll transfer k1 for to 1040 so those things are important and also you can go here into details and enter all the information you need like type um, uh, whatever we need if it's a final k1 amended k1 if it's a rounding partner or things like that so this is where we enter all this information and if there is any info we need to add to ownership information uh, so we just enter it right here ownership okay so yeah this form is uh, like i'll show you in a second i'm sorry i'm just kind of like running 
uh, already. So that's because schedule L is not required. This is all we need. So now I'm just going to look over diagnostics. So it is asking me to enter prior year information. So it tells me the prior year income amount must be presented. Return to screen uh, SEC uh, under general tab of the data entry and make an entry in the total prior year. Okay, let's do that. I think and I also saw this one in their file and security information total prior year amount so I'm just going to enter zero because obviously this is the first year of filing tax return here we have even more diagnostics but that's that's not a problem schedule k2 filing requirements so we have to go to schedule k2 and check the box that we don't have any foreign income or expenses uh, to clear this message, select the appropriate box on line 14 of the screen K, Pro Data Share Credits. Okay, cool. So let's go there. Screen K. Screen K. And it should have box 14. Schedule K2 and K3 are not required. Awesome. So, I mean, some people don't like diagnostics, but I do because it actually tells me what I'm missing and things like that. So that's pretty awesome. So I haven't entered the, um, our shareholders information, like their address and things like that. So it takes me to the screen where I need to enter it, right? And let's see what else. Okay, so now it gives me all this California diagnostics that for purpose of this um, video, we're not going to get into states, we just will clear all amounts for federal. So I'm going to go and also like here we need to go to e-file section. Also choose if return is ready to e-file, what form you want to e-file. So this is override, we don't really have to check it and we'll just suppress the states. Do not send any states. And like in an individual, so now it shows that there's still certain things I need to clear. And let me check what else are those. So basically I need to enter PIN like I did for individual. And also there is somewhere, I guess my ownership information I need to update and correct ownership percentage. Do not total 100%. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna go and check it out under K1 screens. And legal name of the entity is missing Oh, I guess you shouldn't do like commas or things like that. So I'll just go to the name address. And yeah, I remember that. That's actually, um, I'm sorry. This is important one. So we should not include commas in there. So that should clear that information. And here, uh, I guess there is also a place let me see date of birth. There, uh, I'll take a look and see exactly what is missing in here. But let me make sure that that comma things is cleared right now. Yeah, so we just need EIN and these things. Uh, so let me clear that uh, pin information because I cannot disclose that. And I'll show you how I cleared this one in a second. Alrighty, guys. So now we have no diagnostics. That's pretty exciting. I'm sorry, I just closed it for a second. So right here, our tax return is ready to be e-filed. And uh, for shareholders, I just kind of like uh, enter the beginning of shares right here and it calculated the percentage instead of entering it right there. So that was an easy fix. And now uh, let me just show you tax returns. So now on this page, we have under profit and loss. Uh, we our schedule L is not filled up because it's not required. You can still fill it up. You can go and make it the software to make it print if you would like to. So that's easy. And then obviously we have this K1 that our shareholders have to um, will receive, right? Uh, so now I'm going to just quickly show you how easy it is to export K1 from uh, business to individual. So we just press K1 right here and 
it's already connected to our 1040 so we just press export export complete everything exported successfully awesome so let's just make sure it is exported so we go to our tax return and let's see uh it should under income oh here you go s corp we already have all these numbers exported like so that's really awesome let's see if there's any diagnostics created with the expert it's it have not so now we have two return prepared that's really cool and they're ready to e-file so we just select returns for e-file we'll have those two things right here so we just press continue right so this they like now they move to uh, ready to be e-filed section and now if you want to e-file we just go here uh, select them and send and receive so that's yeah that's how it works and yeah we're done congrats <laughs> thank you so much for watching to the end i hope this video would help you in your career and in during this tax season and in general in your development so you learn another tax software Please subscribe to my channel and comment below if you like this video or not. Uh, if there is any other video ideas that you want me to record videos on. And also stay in touch uh, for more videos on Drake Tech software and general tax concept. See you on YouTube. Bye.